now at 5.30 on Newswatch. Sheriff Pat Kelly is digging into a big pile of outstanding criminal warrants. There's line the streets to support both sides of the issue on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade. And in sports, the highlights from Gary Trent Day. Broadcasting live from WOUB-TV in Athens, this is Newswatch. People with open warrants in Athens County can expect to get mail from the sheriff soon. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alyssa Hansen. And I'm Rachel Hoops. The sheriff is introducing a new program to resolve hundreds of criminal cases that have piled up. Tina Kuna reports he is taking a soft approach now before resorting to more drastic tactics later. There are over 2,000 active warrants in Athens County. Sheriff Pat Kelly will be sending out letters asking offenders to pay their fines, serve their jail time, or otherwise clear their warrants. I'm hoping that people do the right thing and come forward. It's their responsibility to have these things taken care of. It's my responsibility to make sure that they do. If people don't get in touch within 10 days of receiving the letter, the Sheriff's Office will make the offender's information public. That means photos, addresses and charges in local media and on websites like Facebook. People interviewed on the street had different views on the Sheriff's plan. I'm glad he's doing it. There's a lot of people that need to definitely pay up their fines. I mean, that's your own personal business. No one really needs to know that unless it's like a feature job. I mean, no one on Facebook, your I mean, I wouldn't want my friends to know if I had something like that out, so. And it's pretty fair. I mean, they broke the law and they knew it. And I mean, if you don't come in, then people are going to see you around. While many agree with the sheriff's attempt to follow through on the warrants, some might fear his measures will intrude on people's privacy. Well, everything we do is a matter of public record. It's already on the it's already on the website. So, is it harsh? No, the harsh act already took place when the person didn't take care and, and live up to their responsibility. The sheriff is optimistic this will work at least with some people, and he hopes that he can save money. He also hopes to reduce the risk for deputies because they wouldn't have to go out and make arrests. Tina Kühne, WOUB News. The Sheriff's Office soon will send out 15 to 20 letters and follow that with 15 to 20 more the week after, and so on. Police in Ohio and West Virginia continue to search for the remaining body parts of a woman murdered in the Charleston, West Virginia area. Police say Carol Rim was cut up with a hacksaw last week. Investigators determined Nathaniel Lawton, Rim's boyfriend, was responsible. They say Lawton cut her body into pieces and then tried to hide them. Lawton killed himself on Thursday when he was surrounded by police. Deputies are searching along Route 35 from Point Pleasant, West Virginia to Jackson, Ohio. Belpre is now using a new agency to collect city income taxes. It's called the Regional Income Tax Agency, or RITA for short. City officials say residents can mail payments to the address on the new tax forms and businesses will be able to file their W-1 and W-3 forms online. The change started at the beginning of the year in hopes that it will save time and money. Belpre residents will still have the option to pay at the city building with cash or credit. Ohio is starting a new program that will, will award scholarships to students with special needs. The scholarships will help pay tuition at private or public schools that will better serve them. The amount awarded will be based on the severity of the disability but can't exceed $20,000. Eligible students must be between 5 and 22 and identified by the public school district as having a disability. Welcome to the News Watch Weather Station. I'm Alex George. Currently in Athens it is 62 degrees, but we are under a wind advisory until 9 p.m. this evening. Even though the advisory is over at 9 p.m., we can still expect strong winds throughout the evening, so please be careful of falling debris and power outages. Currently across the region it is 62 in Athens, 51 degrees in Columbus, and 64 degrees in Ashland. We had an unusually warm January day. Looking at tomorrow, we have a cold front moving out, which will take all the winds out. We should have a clear and sunny day, and by 3 p.m., it will be 43 degrees. So, Rachel and Alyssa, just make sure to watch out for those strong winds. Now, you said 43, though, is the cold front. That still does seems a little warm for January. Absolutely. I mean, these temperatures today were really warm. I think really warm is an understatement. You don't really see 63 in January. No, no, not usually. Just as I should get ready to pull out those flip-flops already. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. 
Ohio may be setting aside more money to give discounted loans to farmers wanting to grow their business. A House bill would extend the state's agriculture link deposit program. The program's maximum annual funding could increase from $125 million to $165 million. A farmer could borrow up to $150,000 at a reduced interest rate. These loans allow farmers to buy feed, seed, fertilizer, fuel, and pay off other operating costs that arise at the beginning of the growing season. The juvenile suspect in the Craigslist robbery scheme has been transferred out of Noble County and will go to a juvenile court. Brogan Rafferty appeared before a Summit County judge this afternoon. The preliminary hearing reviewed the charges and brought up the possibility of a bonded release. The scheme took place in Noble County where two men died and one man was injured. The Rural Action Organization is using a new program to bring more fresh fruit and vegetables to local stores. Coming up, we'll talk to a Rural Action official about the Healthy Corner Stores program. And the GOP candidates are on their way to Florida for the next primary, next on Newswatch. The housing crisis has been battering the western United States. An analysis finds that 82 of the top 100 zip codes hit worse by foreclosures were in western states. 38 of those zip codes were in California and another 28 were in Nevada. Zip codes in Sin City took the top five spots alone. Coming in second for heart, the hardest hit region was the southern part of the country. Gas prices have inched up a few cents over the past two weeks despite a drop in crude oil prices. According to a new survey, the average price of a gallon of regular gas is $3.39. The average price is 3.5 cents higher than two weeks earlier. In the three weeks leading up to the survey, the price rose just over 12 cents. The average price is 28 cents higher than it was a year ago. This weekend marked the 39th anniversary of the historic Roe v. Wade decision. Thousands of demonstrators turned out across the country to show their support for both sides of the issue. Pro-life demonstrators gathered in Washington today for a so-called March of Life. Many of those who participated in the march called for a repeal of the Supreme Court decision. Uh, we've done it three years in a row now. Again, just to show the kids that we stand for we're a pro-life family and to participate with uh, other pro-life people. Politicians like John Banner spoke on the issue as well today. The No Taxpayer Funding for Abortion Act recently passed in the House. The Senate has not yet taken up on the measure. The Republican race for president has, yet cha has changed yet again. Newt Gingrich won big in South Carolina over the weekend and is looking to keep the momentum going. CNN reporter Tommy Andres takes a look at Florida and the big battle ahead. It's good to be back in Florida. I need your help. The Republican race for president has arrived in Florida. So far, there have been three contests with three different winners. Rick Santorum in Iowa, Mitt Romney in New Hampshire, and on Saturday, Newt Gingrich in South Carolina. The former House Speaker plans a week of big speeches in Florida to keep up his momentum. I think my job in Florida is to convince people that I am the one candidate who can clearly defeat Obama in a series of debates and the one candidate who has big enough solutions that they would really get America back on track. Mitt Romney is already looking for ways to bounce back after his defeat in South Carolina, starting with the release of his tax returns. Romney had taken heat for saying he wouldn't make them public until April. Now he says he'll release them tomorrow. We just uh, made a mistake in, in holding off as long as we did. It just was uh, a distraction. We want to get back to the real issues in the campaign. Romney's rivals will have some catching up to do if they want to claim victory in Florida's primary. Romney already has a well-funded organization in the state. I'm Tommy Andres reporting. The Florida primary is on January 31st. The candidates will debate in Tampa tonight. Two people have died near Birmingham, Alabama, and at least 100 others were injured after a line of powerful storms moved through overnight. Emergency crews are working to find people who may be trapped or injured and to clear the roads. There have also been reports of tornadoes in the area. Schools in Tuscaloosa were canceled today, and nearly 40,000 people were without electricity in the state. They had us settled in the basement, and all of a sudden the front door come flying by us. And uh, we made it just in the nick of time. The good Lord just blessed us, and we're just glad we're here. We've lost our house, but at least we have. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We got our family, and that's all matters right now. There was substantial damage done to retail and residential areas. Rescue crews and emergency workers are currently working to clear debris. 
Four Kenyan officials will stand trial on human rights violations which allegedly occurred after the 2007 election. Kenya's Deputy Prime Minister, Cabinet Secretary, former Agriculture Minister and a radio journalist are all accused of crimes against humanity. The charges are connected to more than a thousand deaths in the post-election ethnic violence that pitted supporters of the candidates against each other. The charges are being prosecuted in the International Criminal Court. This week, millions are traveling back to their homes to celebrate the New Year holiday. The Chinese New Year, that is. Hundreds are swarming to a famous Chinese temple today for good luck for the Year of the Dragon. Worshippers tap their wallets on the statue, believing that the action will bring them good fortune. People will be celebrating their ancestors for the next three days. Rural Action is concerned about some of our neighbors having access to affordable and nutritious food and is taking steps to fix the problem. Matt Moore from Rural Action joins us now in our studio. Thank you so much for being here this evening. It's an honor, Alyssa. Thanks for having us. Now let's just start off talking, what is a food desert? Well, just like the traditional sense of a desert, uh, it's, an ac it's a place or a situation that, that doesn't have access to nutritional food, just like a regular desert wouldn't have water uh, enough to sustain life. A food desert is a, is a situation, um, just as much as it is a regional thing, it's a socioeconomic uh, condition that a lot of people are, are living in. And those two can kind of be tied together, correct? Very much so. Uh, there are food deserts in urban areas as well as rural areas. Now, what extent do we have them here in our area, specifically Southeast Ohio? Southeast Ohio? Well, Ohio as a state uh, is estimated to have over 75,000 households that are, that are defined as the USDA in this situation. Um, not having a car and uh, not being within walking distance to uh, a grocer. Now, what is the Country Fresh Stops program? The Country Fresh Stops program is a uh, partnership with Dr. Joe Clark from Ohio State University and Rural Action, which is a local nonprofit. Um, and this is hopefully uh, an answer to this problem. It, it partners with local businesses, which is the resort for people that do not have um, immediate access, such as uh, convenience stores and gas stations, uh, which is the the last resort sort of for folks. Um, we partner with them to, to introduce uh, a line of product or a line of produce, vegetables and, uh, and fruit and nutritional things that can stain, sustain life. So that sounds like that's one of the goals of this program, but what are some of the other goals of this program that you hope to accomplish? Um, increasing access is, is the first goal, but also um, re-educating and uh, introducing folks to a healthy diet and healthy living um, as well as creating a new profit center for those local staples uh, in, the, in the small communities, those businesses. And hopefully this will have a multi-generational, sustainable impact uh, for the future of our region. Who do you expect to attend this training session? Um, this training session is for any stakeholder, really, um, local business owners, as well as anyone that thinks that, uh, that sustainability and economic development are the way out of... Uh, poor, poor um, living conditions. Now just briefly, what are some steps, other steps that are being taken to eliminate these food deserts? Um, one, one major one is about 18 minutes from Athens, Ohio. Uh, it's called the Chester Hill Produce Auction and this was originally a food desert, um, but this auction now has remedied that. It's an aggregation of over or nearly a hundred local producers where now uh, customers as large as Ohio University and their dining halls and customers as small as someone that doesn't have a car and wants to walk can get access to these local grocers. All right, well it sounds like you guys are doing a lot to really help eliminate food mm -hmm. deserts in our area. So Matt Moore, thank you so much for being here this evening and speaking Absolutely. with us. Thank you so much for having me. On Wall Street today, stocks finished flat and the Dow ended a four-day rally. Investors continue to monitor developments in the Greek debt relief negotiations as the consequences to the U.S. markets are still unclear.
Coming up on Newswatch, we'll be taking a look at the current wind advisory that we are under, the cold front that took over today, where it's headed, and we'll take a look at my extended forecast, so stay tuned. Currently in Athens, it is 62 degrees, but we are under a wind advisory until 9 p.m. this evening. Now, just because the advisory is over at 9 p.m. doesn't mean we won't see strong winds until th throughout the night. So just make sure you're watching out for debris and power outages. Currently through our, throughout our region, we have unusually warm temperatures for January. Right now it is 64 degrees in Gallipolis, 64 in Huntington, and 51 degrees in Huntington. Tonight we have temperatures of 32 degrees, strong winds throughout the evening, and it will be partly cloudy. We will have wind gusts of 21 miles per hour, so just be aware of that. Overnight tonight, not much else going on aside from the wind. It will be a pretty clear evening, reaching 28 degrees by 3 a.m. Tomorrow, this is the cold front that came through today that hit us pretty strong, but as you can see, it's moving out, and by tomorrow night, it will be completely gone, and we have clear skies um, to look forward to. Tomorrow morning, it will be 27 degrees, bright and early, and by 3 p.m., it will be 43 degrees and sunny. So no more of those strong winds. It will be a fairly nice day. Tomorrow, we have a high of 45 degrees and sunny, clear throughout the day, winds from 6 to 10 miles per hour, so still kind of strong, but not anything compared to what we will be seeing tonight. Tomorrow... We have 41 degrees in Portsmouth, 39 degrees in Columbus, and 44 degrees in Athens. These are much warmer temperatures than what we're used to in January, so make sure you enjoy them. Today we had a high of 63 degrees, and as you notice, the record is 69 degrees set in 1967, so we weren't too far off. Our low today was 34, and the record low is negative 16 degrees, so thank goodness we are a lot warmer today. If you were up bright and early, you saw the sun rose at 7.42 a.m., and the sun just set at 5.17 p.m. Taking a look at our seven-day forecast, we have some cloudy skies um, early in the week, but on Thursday we have a chance of rain, 50%, still warmer temperatures, 45 degrees. On Saturday we have another chance for rain, 30%, um, but then going into your work week next week, it, pretty warm temperatures still to look forward to. So guys, aside from that wind tonight, we still have some pretty warm temperatures to look forward to later in the week. Yeah, it really sounds like, I mean, this is almost March-like weather we're talking about. You can't, and there's no snow, so that's good, at least for now. Absolutely, and in this region, we really haven't seen much snow yet. We had that big ice storm this past weekend, but other than that, not much so snow, so really not winter weather. Well, speaking of the ice storm this weekend, even though the weather was kind of gloomy, the Convo was not gloomy this weekend with Gary Trent Day, Maddie Kuhn, Jason's for sports. That's right. The Convocation Center was rocking, and it was in honor of a great player that we all should have recognized, and he got a great, he had a great time. So on, next on Newswatch, we do hear what Ohio University basketball legend Gary Trent has been doing recently and why the women's basketball team is also feeling positive next on Newswatch. Gary Trent returned to his old stomping grounds on Saturday. The athletes who currently call the Convo home celebrated him in a great way with a win over rival Miami, but that wasn't the only celebrating he did. During halftime, the shack of the Mac and his family stood with Ohio University President Roderick McDavis at half court. There was a highlight video of Trent's career with his accomplishments, read by voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, and that was followed by greetings and well wishes from friends who could not give their congratulations in person. Finally, Trent's number 20 was revealed from the rafters with a flourish of gold glitter, and he received a framed likeness of the banner. Then he spoke to the crowd of over 13,000, but before the game, he also spoke to the media. 100 years from now, 200 years from now, you know, I'll be long gone, but that jersey will still hang, and students who never met me, students who aren't born today, will still hear of me and acknowledge me. I've been doing a lot of things with the NBA the last few years. Uh, I went to their coaching program a year ago, the NBA coaches program. You know, they teach you uh, what do you have to do to be an assistant, how to do a scouting report, what's your role as an assistant. 
After an overtime win against Akron on Thursday, the Ohio women's basketball team struggled mightily on offense against Toledo on Sunday and lost 52-33. to The Cats had a chance to win despite only scoring 13 points by halftime since the Rockets couldn't find the net either. It was like, where's Waldo? But OU couldn't put together a run to take command. Then Toledo ended Ohio's chances at a comeback with a 10-0 run down the final stretch. Senior guard Tanisha Benson ended her streak of 12 games with 10 points or more, and no Bobcats scored over 10 points in Ohio's 21% shooting effort. However, Ohio left feeling positive about their defense, which forced 22 turnovers. There's nothing really to say. Shoot the ball, make some layups, uh, knock down some of the open shots, and maybe this could be a, a possibly a different basketball game. But right, right out the gate, I mean, they just outworked us. And, we, you know, when you're down 10-0, there's not much you can do. Ohio continues its Mac West swing against Central Michigan on Wednesday. Grant Burkhart will have the play-by-play -play on WOUB AM 1340. The wrestling team couldn't pin Bloomsburg last night. They lost their second duel in a row, 25-6. to The two victors for the green and white were sophomores Ryan Geringer in the 184-pound weight class and Jeremy Johnson in heavyweight. Johnson is now 24-5 and overall and 7-0 and in duels this year, and the seventh-ranked wrestler in the nation has won four straight. Ohio led 6-4 after three matches, but the Huskies answered with seven straight victories. Mo memorial service for former Penn State head coach Joe Paterno have been set. Based on a schedule from a family spokesman, the first public viewing is Tuesday at a spiritual center on the Penn State campus. The next public viewing is on Wednesday, followed by a private service at 2 p.m. Thursday afternoon, there is a memorial service at the Penn State Basketball Arena. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett ordered all flags at the state capitol and its state facilities at half staff from today until Thursday in honor of the longtime coach. The New York Giants beat the San Francisco 49ers 20-17 in overtime to win the NFC Championship last night. The G-Men capitalized on a Kyle Williams fumble in the extra frame when Lawrence Tynes kicked the game-winning 31-yard field goal. Williams also muffed a punt in the fourth quarter that set up a Giants touchdown. Eli Manning threw for 316 yards and two touchdowns to lead New York to their second Super Bowl appearance in four years. The last time they made the trip, they upset the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 42. I'm very proud of this group, very proud of this group. Congratulating our ownership, our team, our coaches for the way that they prepared and, uh, and performed here. Eli just hung in there and hung in there, hung in there. and. Uh, and made plays when we needed uh, for him to make them and uh, displayed the kind of leadership that he's shown all year long. Which team will the Giants face in the big game? Well, those very same Patriots. New England defeated Baltimore 23-20 yesterday to set up the rematch. Ravens kicker Billy Cundiff shanked the game-tying 32-yard field goal with 11 seconds left, giving the Patriots the win. New England won despite the unusual struggles of quarterback Tom Brady. Brady threw for 239 yards and two interceptions and didn't throw a touchdown for the first time in 36 games. When the Patriots take the field in two weeks, it will be their fifth appearance in the last 11 years and, the, and their first since they lost to the Giants in 2008. Well, it so we, was, you know, two very physical teams, I thought. Um, you know, we ran the ball in a few times. I thought we ran the ball great. Um, but they're, you know, it's, it's a great team. You know, the Ravens, they're, they're in this position for a reason. And so we can only hope that this year's Super Bowl is as, is as exciting as the last matchup between these two teams. I mean, you had the helmet catch by David Tyree. It was amazing. Well, definitely, by looking at that game yesterday, it definitely hasn't been the year of the kicker, especially after that missed field goal for Baltimore. That's right. But with Eli setting Giants records and passing yards, passing attempts, I think I'm going to coin this year, you're the quarterback. Well, to see what comes on Super Bowl Sunday, but I mean, the, just the fact that these two teams are playing again, I mean, it's been a few years, but the fact that they're both there again is going to be a really interesting matchup. Mm -hmm. And the Giants have had a long road. I mean, they had to win twice away, so. Well, it's to see what happens. Pretty impressive. Thanks, Maddie. And stay tuned tonight on WOUB. Here's a look at what's coming up next on your public television station. A newborn in Washington State can already brag about surviving two unexpected disasters. The first, getting through one of the worst winter storms to ever hit the state of Washington. The second, being delivered in a hospital elevator. That's right, elevator. 
Due to the snowy and icy conditions, the drive to the hospital took twice as long, and as the couple reached the parking lot of the ER, the mother was already ready to have her bouncing baby boy. And as the staff raced to get the mother to the, her hospital room, the elevator got stuck between floors like her luck couldn't get any worse. Everyone ended up okay, though. The baby was healthy, and the dad climbed down the elevator shaft to cut the umbilical cord of his newborn. Well, we definitely haven't seen any snow. Well, we saw it over the weekend, but it doesn't lo look like we're going to see any snow and ice like that baby in Washington saw. So, no, no, absolutely not. No snow, no ice this week. We are currently under a wind advisory until 9 o'clock this evening. And although that only lasts until 9 o'clock, still expect strong winds up to 21 miles per hour. So just be careful and be aware. 32 degrees overnight tonight in Athens, partly cloudy. Um, Tomorrow, 45 degrees, sunny and clear throughout the day as a cold front moves out and taking those winds with it. And looking at our seven-day forecast, we have pretty warm temperatures for January throughout the week, 41 on Tuesday, and by next week, still in the 40s. All right. Thanks, Alex. And that does it for our broadcast on this 23rd of January, 2012. Thanks for watching. For Alex George, Maddie Kuhn, and Rachel Hoops, I'm Alyssa Hansen. You can get the latest news and weather on the WOUB radio network. And you can view our program anytime online at WOUB.org. Have a great night.